with so much yelling and screaming going on, we thought it might be helpful to take a hard look at some of the innovative changes already being made in healthcare around this country. This morning, we launch a new series, Healthcare, The Right Remedies, and we begin in Oregon. In the midst of a deep recession this week, the state made some big changes there, and what Oregon is doing could be a lesson for the folks in Washington. Oregon Governor Ted Kulingoski's state has the second highest unemployment rate in the nation. You've been pushing for this for, what, four, five? Six years. Six years. And yet the governor successfully pushed for costly health care reforms. This isn't the time to retrench. You have to continue to invest in your state, even in most the most difficult times. Legislation signed this week will give 80,000 more Oregon children access to state-sponsored health insurance. The state will go from 87 percent of children being insured to 95 percent of all kids insured by July 2011. Health care reform has a long tradition in this state. There's a popular bumper sticker on cars here in Portland that reads, health care is a right, not a privilege. Kids like Nick, whose mom used to tell him not to run or climb a jungle gym, will have coverage. He plays sports, um, he goes to summer camp, he's involved in Boy Scouts. Everything requires health insurance. The plan is paid for by a 1% tax on insurance providers and a 3% tax on hospitals, who ended up supporting the bill. It is better to have someone come into their emergency unit that has insurance than then doesn't have insurance. It's actually cheaper for them. Insurance companies are expected to pass on their tax by increasing premiums. But the state is also trying to lower costs for everyone, cost-cutting changes already being implemented at this clinic in Portland. That's the preventive list, so mammograms. Electronic records, steering patients toward cheap and effective prescriptions, an emphasis on primary care. The best value is in ongoing relationships that know the entirety of your health care need. That's what will lead us to our affordable system that can provide health care for all. Hey, it's Nurse Rachel at the Richmond Clinic. They call chronically ill patients at home. All right, sounds good. We'll see you Monday. And sometimes they're thanked with flowers. Is it standard for patients to give you flowers? Does that happen a lot? <laughs> not, not, I, no, not a lot. Um, chocolate sometimes. <laughs> At this clinic, in this state, models for reform.